So it's no secret at this point that the new M2 MacBook Airs have a little bit of a thermal problem. In fact, in my extreme thermal throttling torture test, I actually got the MacBook Air to completely disable all of its performance cores and basically lose half its performance in a very extreme scenario. So today I want to take a crack at fixing it. What can you do to improve the thermal situation in the new MacBook Air. Well, to find out, I got these. A whole bunch of thermal pads. And today we are gonna try some cheap, reversible modding of the MacBook Air to see if we can solve thermal throttling completely. So make sure to get subscribed, leave a like down below. This one ought to be a banger. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Okay, so let's talk about this experiment for a second first. Now, what makes this interesting is we've got two different MacBook Airs. Now, they do have different GPUs, but because we're testing thermal throttling predominantly on the CPU with Cinebench, they perform exactly the same, which means that we can compare them. And that gives us an interesting opportunity. A thing that really stood out to me in a previous video when we actually opened up the MacBook Air was just how big the heatsink is. So why not just like cover all of that in thermal pads? What would happen? So to find out, I bought a couple different types of thermal pads. The ones here in blue are your standard, pretty cheap ones. You can get these for like $7, even for all four of these. They come in a couple of different thicknesses for different applications, and they have a thermal conductivity of six watts per meter Kelvin. Essentially, when you're trying to dissipate heat, you want a higher thermal conductivity because that means that it's able to transfer heat through the surface more effectively. And the air gap that exists between the heat sink and the bottom of the case barely transfers any heat. So by using the thermal pad, we are going to be able to transfer heat from the M2 chip to the heat sink through the bottom of the case and thus use that as a heat sink. And so that's why I've got this gray thermal pad. This is a more expensive $15 thermal pad, which has a thermal conductivity of 12.8 watts per meter Kelvin. So we're gonna set up two different tests here. On one of the MacBook Airs, I'm going to completely cover the heat sink with thermal pads. And on the other one, we're just gonna use this one over the area where the M2 is to see if there's any performance difference on what you wanna use. But before we get into opening these machines up, I did run a control test on the base MacBook Air to give us a point of comparison. Well, in the first Cinebench run, I actually got the highest score that I've tested on the MacBook Air, 8405. The temperature of the palm rest was 41 degrees Celsius, and the temperature of the lower case was 44 degrees at its hottest point. During the second back-to-back -back run, our score dropped to 8,030. The palm rest temperature increased to 44, while the bottom stayed the same, and our CPU peaked at 108. In run three, our score decreased again to 7,830, and we saw the CPU actually decreased to 94. And then finally, in the fourth run, we had a score of 7618, and the temperature of the palm rest at this point was 44 degrees, with the bottom still at 47, and the CPU this time was 92 degrees. So what we see here is pretty linear, pretty predictable thermal throttling. And now that we have a baseline, a point to compare things to, let's shut these things down and install our thermal pads. I hate to interrupt, but the 13-inch the MacBook Air looks fine, but I, for one, am more excited for a 15-inch MacBook Air, and that's why I'm here with today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace has all the tools I need to petition the public that a 15-inch MacBook is the future, including adding in a custom storefront to sell some promotional merchandise to support the cause. Plus, once I have a loyal gang of 15-inch MacBook Air enjoyers, I can set up member areas just for my most dedicated fans with gated content like videos, newsletters, and even courses. 
Plus, I can make sure that my website is well targeted to find all 15 inch MacBook fans thanks to built in SEO tools. Thanks to Squarespace and its powerful tools, we are getting one step closer every day to convincing the public that a 15 inch MacBook is what we need. So, check out Squarespace by heading to the link in the description below. And now let's get back to the video. So if you want to follow along at home, the opening procedure for the MacBook Air is pretty simple. We've got four screws in each corner, and then you're gonna to wanna to take a little suction cup and pull up in the middle so that you can insert a guitar pick or a spudger or something into this front edge like that. Move from side to side to release the two clips in the front. Then we're gonna move around the side, clip over there, move around the other side, clip over there. Those are the four clips. And then what we are gonna wanna do is lift up the bottom and pull down. And do be warned, it's a little bit tough. So now that we have the bottom case off, we can get a look at the very interesting heatsink. It basically goes the entire width of the M2 logic board. And Apple does use this thermal insulating tape over here, probably to prevent heat from transferring to the bottom case. So. Theoretically, we could get some improvement in thermal conductivity by peeling that off, but I don't wanna make any permanent modifications to this machine. If this is an $8 fix, I would like for it to be reversible if you wanna sell it or if you need warranty repairs or anything like that. So we're just gonna peel the backing off of this thermal pad and I'm just going to stick it right over here, right on top of the M2 chip. So there we go, pretty simple. Um, let's go ahead and put the back cover on this machine and we'll move on to the Midnight MacBook Air. All right, so now we've got the Midnight MacBook Air opened up and it's time to take a different approach. Now, one thing I did notice is on the other MacBook, I used a 1.5 millimeter thermal pad and it's a bit thick. It makes it pretty hard to get the bottom closed. So this four pack that I got comes with 0.5, one, 1.5 and two millimeters. What I wanna use is predominantly the 0.5 and the one. So let's go ahead and get some scissors and cut some pads to fit the whole entire heatsink. Now, when I say whole entire heatsink, I do wanna make a little caveat in that, and that is this ribbon cable. I don't think we should put a thermal pad over this because then we're gonna transfer heat from our system into this ribbon cable. Okay, so there's my layout. We've got two thinner strips up here towards the top, and then we have thicker one millimeter pads across the majority of the heatsink. So let's see if we fix the MacBook Air. Okay, run one is underway, and already we can see temperatures are climbing up into the 80s. <laughs> and it literally takes like four seconds for the temperatures to start heating up. Yep, yep, we're at 90. All right, so we're almost done the test now and both CPUs are sitting at 104, 105 degrees Celsius. So things have more or less evened out. Let's get a reading on the temperatures. So the palm rest is looking like 3940 over there and pretty much the same over there, 39 or 40. Ooh, that's right around the thermal pad. I can feel it, it's toasty. We're reading 50, that's 50. Oh, okay, here we go. The final run here, we got a score of 8568. That's the highest I've ever seen. That's higher than it was before. Let's see what we got here on the left. A Little bit behind here, 8427, also higher. Okay. All right, so after the third run, we're down to 7919 and 7856. Let's go into round four. It's run four, everyone. What's good? What's going on here? What do we got? Okay, still got some thermal throttling here. I see we've got CPU temperatures at 93 and 90. Uh, let's go ahead and read some temps. Okay, still 41, 44 there. Okay, not bad. 
Not bad, 42. So no change in palm rest temperature. Let's see underneath. Okay, ooh, ooh, ooh. That's toasty. That is very toasty. 51. And here on our surface area test, definitely not as warm. This, honestly, 46, 47, that's not much hotter than it actually got in the control test. All right, our round four scores are about to come in. Let's see what we get. 78, 43. And then over here, 77, 94. Guys, that is undeniably better. Remember, in the control test, we got down to 76.15 on the final run. Now we're at 78.43. And remember, that's just compared to today's control test. When I initially tested this a couple of days ago, the thermal throttling got us down to 7,100, depending on the conditions. So we're seeing a very noticeable increase in the score that we're getting here. But the thing that really surprised me, honestly, was the fact that our round one score was noticeably higher than without the thermal pads. I thought that the thermal pads were mainly going to be extending our peak performance, not actually improving it. So I think we need to do another test. So I wanna see if our thermal pads are gonna make a difference in a blender render. So I've got the classroom CPU test here. Now there was already a difference between the base model and the higher tier model because of the faster SSD. So this was already a little quicker, but now I wanna see if having a better heat transfer ability is gonna give us more peak performance on either or maybe both of these. So already just a couple minutes into the test, we're at 101 degrees on the midnight MacBook Air, and we just got to 92 on the base model. So it looks like the thicker thermal pad with the higher thermal conductivity does actually make a difference in how long it takes to saturate the heatsink. Some of the heat, instead of going into the heatsink, is spreading into our bottom case. So let's see what that does for the performance. It took initially 10 minutes and 49 seconds for the base model MacBook Pro, and it took nine minutes and 53 seconds for the higher tier one. Now that's weird, okay? So first of all, the base model finished the render in 10 minutes and 30 seconds. That's 19 seconds faster than our control. So there you go, that is some improvement. But here's where it gets weird. The midnight MacBook Air with the faster SSD took 10 minutes and 38 seconds. That's 40 seconds or so slower than it was without the thermal pads. So that's a little bit strange. The performance over here is a little inconsistent. You may also have noticed that throughout our Cinebench testing, this one was consistently slower than the base model. That's interesting. It's hard to determine whether that's up to the thermal pads or another external factor, but using thermal pads to improve the cooling in your MacBook Air is definitely viable. Now, as for which of these two methods I would prefer, well, I think there's a couple of takeaways that we can talk about here. The first of that is uh, if you do get a thermal pad, I would recommend getting a one millimeter because the 1.5 that I used in here was just a little too thick and it was really hard to get the bottom case to close. Number two, the 12.8 watt per meter Kelvin pad definitely seemed to make a difference. That's what we used over here. However, the complete surface area pads also made a difference in terms of the surface temperatures. So in an ideal world, I think you should probably combine what we learned from both of these. Get a bunch of thermal pads with as high thermal conductivity as you can and spread them over that heatsink so that you're not concentrating all of the heat transfer in one area and you can probably get the best of both worlds. Better cooling, better peak performance even, and you don't have these really high surface temperatures. So I thought this was a really, really interesting experiment, and I'm curious to know what you guys think as well. 
How would you explain that weird anomaly we saw in Blender on the higher end MacBook Air? Let me know in the comments below and let me know if this is something that you think is worth trying. I'm very curious. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below and don't forget to subscribe. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.